there's a lot to say here in this section, in this video. And of course, that's very subject specific and it will depend on your dissertation topic as well. But there are three main themes that I think apply to most students. And this is what we will talk about in this video. The first is where to save your data. The second is how to back up your work. And the third one is to do with file organization. Number one, how to save your data. My advice is that, especially for students at Edinburgh University, is that you use the university storage and that is your M drive. Um, that storage is it's particularly convenient because it is always backed up and if you have any problem with it, you lose a file, you want to access the different version that perhaps you modified, it's, you can do that very, very easily. Now, of course, um, I know that most of you, and including myself, work from our laptops rather than using the university computers. And so using the M drive might seem a little bit cumbersome perhaps, but there is a very easy way to link your laptop and your M drive using a VPN. If you don't know how to do that, there is a section in the handbook which you can look at and explains in, in a lot of detail how to do it. And it takes around 15 minutes, not more. And even if you find that difficult, you can always go to the IT help desk at the library and ask them to do it for you. And it should take only five minutes. Now, number two, how to back up your work. If you decide not to use your M drive um, or you're using um, a different type of storage, I would definitely recommend that you back up your work. And what do I mean by this? I mean, save at least three copies separately of your work in separate locations and also separate storage types. So for example, you might save something that you're working on all the time in your computer, maybe have a separate cloud storage and also a hard drive and keep those in separate places in case something happens. I would also recommend that you create a plan for backing up your work and you stick to it. So for example, think about how often do you want to back up your work and also where would you like to back up your work. To give you an example, what I tend to do with my PhD work is that things that I'm working on regularly, say for example this month I'm, I'm working on my chapter 4. So everything that I'm working on I will back up at the end of the day or, if, or at the very least at the end of the week. And then once a month I back up everything that I have just in case in a external hard drive. And number three, file organization. How many of us have files in our computer that are named, say, chapter four, and then chapter four, final, and then chapter four, final, final, and then chapter four, final, 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 this is the right one. Of course, that's not useful. And I think that's quite obvious because you might not know which, um, which of them is the one you really want to work on, or you might end up deleting the one that you wanted and things like that. So. File naming and file organization is really important, not only for text documents, but also for data. So for example, if you are downloading, say, an uh, audio file or a video file or, an, or some readings from, a, from, a, from an instrument you're using, think about naming them in a way that is meaningful so that you can find them really easily and you don't get confused rather than leaving them as a bunch of numbers that don't mean anything. Now, for those of you who are conducting a decision that involves um, secondary data or primary data, there are two further uh, issues that I think is really, really important that you think about. They do go beyond the scope of this video and they are explained in a lot of detail in the handbook. And so I would really recommend that you have a look at that. And these are ethics and data repositories. In a specific, ethical considerations are a big, big part of research and they will apply to almost everyone conducting uh, a dissertation that involves primary or secondary data. And my advice is that you think very, very carefully about why you're conducting, um, why you're collecting that type of data and how you will use it and whether any harm will come to either yourself as a researcher, which we tend to forget about, and also the participants or the, or the subjects that you are researching with.